I hope you're all well. So today we're going to make some shadow box inserts to create a 3D shadow box effect. Uh, so you can put some lights in it and it's going to glow and it's going to have a 3D kind of layered effect. And I've been asked lots and lots of times to show how you can make these and I just thought Halloween was the perfect time. So the first thing I want to do is my shadow box is actually in centimeters so I need to change my canvas from inches to centimeters so I'm going to come up to my home button I'm going to go to settings and I'm going to change my units from inches to centimeter. I'm then going to grab a square and I'm going to make it the same size as my shadow box frame which is 18 inches and my shadow box has actually got an insert in it already and the recess when that insert is in there is 16 centimeters. So I'm just going to duplicate this one and I'm going to change it to 16 centimeters. I'm then going to highlight both of them, align and center and then I can slice. And this will then give me my insert and this is what I'm going to work with so I'm going to duplicate it a few times and I'm then just going to hide those you'll see I've already got things in my layers panel this is just for me to remember what I'm creating so the first thing I want to do is go to images and I've just searched for haunted house and I really like this one so we're going to work with this one so we're going to insert images now this isn't going to be my back layer but it is going to be the kind of centerpiece of my image if you like so I just want to do it first. Once I've got it where I want it I'm going to ungroup it you can see it's three layers I'm going to delete that blue layer straight away and I'm also going to hide my black layer and my frame as well because I want to work with this layer. Now I'm not going to have this as a full shadow layer. I want it just to go on the back of my black cutout. So it's going to be a piece of vellum but I don't want this fence and I can't contour it because it's all attached. So I'm just going to grab a square and I'm going to move my square slightly so it's going to sit perfectly against my house. I'm then going to highlight and slice and I can then come in and just remove the fence. I can then bring back my house, I'm just going to arrange and move to front and also my cutout. So as I say, with my orange piece, I don't want that to be a full layer. I'm literally just going to cut it out in vellum and stick it onto the back of my house. So I'm going to hide that. I'm going to highlight everything and I'm just going to weld. So they will then cut out as one. And you can see if I bring that back, it's just going to sit behind it. I do want to change the colour of that layer to black though. So as I say, this isn't going to be at the back or the front, but it is kind of my centrepiece, so it makes sense for me to start with this one. So you'll then see I've got lots of circles which I've transformed to create kind of rolling hills. Now, I'm going to do these all as layers and I'm going to do them in just a white thin cardstock which I'm then going to add some inks to, uh, maybe a bit of paint just to give that mottled effect but the light is still going to shine through. But I do need to do a few things with them because I don't want, with the light, if I just layer them on top of each other like this, you're going to see the background of everything else and we don't want that so we're going to have to do some slicing. So I'm going to hide this first of all and then I'm going to hide all the other ones because I want to weld this one into one. So that's now one complete piece. I'm then going to bring back this one and I'm going to highlight and slice so I want to keep this piece, so I'm going to hide it and then I want to remove this piece, so I'm going to delete it. Now if I hide that piece and I bring that piece back, I've got a gap. 
So I want to keep that piece and all I'm going to do is just weld it back together. And then if I bring this piece back, you can see that it's sliced out. I can then bring this one because I want these two to be attached. I'm going to hide this one and I'm going to weld these two together. If I then bring this one in, you'll see we've got that overlap again. So all I'm going to do is highlight all of it and I'm going to slice. So I want to keep this top bit and this bottom bit. So I'm going to hide those. I don't want those bits so I can delete those. And then of course I don't want to delete these bits because it will leave me with a slice out. So again, I'm just going to highlight and weld. So if I bring them all back, you'll then be able to see how they'll all fit in together. If I then bring back the house, it starts to make a bit more sense. And if we arrange and move our house to front, you'll see that our house is then going to sit on these hills. I'm just going to hide these for a second and I'm going to bring in three of our frames. I'm just going to move those all on top of each other and I'm going to align and center and I'm then going to bring them over to our house and as close as I can and then I'm going to align and center. I'm then going to hide the house and I'm going to hide two of the frames and I'm going to bring back my first hill and all I'm going to do is highlight and weld and I just want to change the colour to a light green like that. We're then going to bring back this one and again a frame and again we're just going to highlight and weld and again I'm going to change the colour to a different green and then we're going to bring back this one and again this one and we're going to highlight and weld. So they are going to cut out as layers and we can then change the colour of that one. And it's always worth constantly bringing everything back so you can see how it's going to look. So I'm then going to bring a, another frame and I'm going to, I don't know where I want this to be yet, whether I want it to be at the front or in the middle somewhere. So we're just going to bring it there and we're going to go and grab a tree from our images. So I've then got my next layer and you can see I've got my gravestones here and of course I've measured it up against the rest of them to make sure it all looks right and then I've hidden those. Now with this one I want to change it slightly so I'm just going to go to contour and I'm just going to remove this swell because I don't want it. And I'm also going to have some vellum behind here but I don't want to cut out a whole kind of square of vellum because that's just a waste really. So I'm just going to grab a shape and I think we're just going to grab circles. I'm going to bring them in and just size them up and I may need to unlock and transform them. So this is roughly how it's going to look and of course it's all going to be in our box frame. We're going to have our candles in there. I think I just want one last layer so we're going to bring one of these back and I think we're definitely going to get a witch this time. So if I now weld this, obviously it's all going to become one, but I don't want them all as individual frame pieces either. So all I'm going to do is just hide these pieces. And I'm just going to weld the outline piece. So we're just going to highlight and weld. So finally I'm going to bring back one of these and I'm going to be cutting it out several times because it's going to be my foam. So it's going to sit in between some of my layers and then finally I'm just going to grab a shape and a square 
and I'm going to make it 18 centimeters by 18 centimeters which is the size of our complete image and this is then going to sit right at the back and I think I'm going to cut it out of vellum but I'm not sure yet so we can then go to make it you can see we've got all our layers here we're then going to go to continue I am going to be using lots of different materials today and I will go through them which materials I'm using uh, different card stocks I'm going to be using vellum I'm obviously going to be using foam as well uh, but I'll let you know what cut settings I'm going to use for those but obviously between each of your layers if you are going to change the type of cut setting you need then you need to ensure you come into design space and physically change it So I've got some large sheets of foam here. Now this is thicker than normal craft foam. I can't remember where I got it from and I can't remember the thickness of it. So I'm going to show you two ways in which you can cut it today. First of all I'm going to, I'm going to be using my maker both ways but with the first way I'm going to show you, you can use it with your air and then the second way is maker and knife blade specific. Now as I say, this is deeper than normal craft foam, so I know that I am going to have to go in with my manual craft knife and finish it, but of course because my blade will have made quite a big indent, it won't take a lot of effort to finish it off. So if you are using an air machine or you've got a maker but you haven't got a knife blade, you are ideally going to want a deep cut blade. In terms of foam in the air, I always struggled with difficult images. I only cut out basic shapes. To find your foam setting, just go into your custom settings and you will find foam. There are three settings. There is craft foam, glitter foam, and Eva foam. Now with the craft foam setting there is the choice with the maker to have the knife blade. I'm using the Eva foam setting today and the only available blade is the deep cut blade. We're then going to put the other end on and this time we're going to be using our knife blade and I'm going to set the setting to craft foam and then I'm just going to edit tools and choose my knife blade. So we've talked about the craft foam settings. These are just some card stocks that I had. They're nothing special, they were just in my stash and I just cut all of them on medium card stock setting. This is shimmer paper and was just cut on the shimmer paper setting. This is sparkle paper and again was cut on the sparkle paper setting. I've got vellum here, these were all cut on the vellum setting. My pearl paper was cut on the pearl paper setting. And then my craft board was cut on the craft board setting. So before I do anything, I just like to layer it all together, just so I can get an idea of what I need to do, if anything. So I've got my back vellum paper, then I've got my first uh, hill bit, which I'm going to decorate. I've then got one of my foam pieces. I cut out four of these. I'm then going to go in with my next hill. And of course this is all rough until it's glued down. And then my next one. I then want to go in with another piece of foam. I want to add my house in there and my vellum background. Just to get a rough idea, it doesn't have to be perfect. Then I'm going to put another piece of my craft foam over. I'm going to add my tree and then my gravestones. And do I want my tree? See, this is why you want to play, because you want to work out how you want it to be. Then another piece of foam, and then our witch. And then, of course, we can add in our other pieces, and we've got our vellum to go behind our gravestones. And, of course, we lost one of our gravestones because I wasn't paying attention. I may stick it on there, I may not. We'll see how I feel. So I'm just going to decorate my mounds using some ink now. 